and welcome to Bookbinding 101, Create a Pamphlet Found Artist Book or Zine. My name is Elizabeth Castaldo. I'm an artist, a printmaker, and a bookmaker. And I love making artist books. An artist book is an artwork that takes the form of a book. And artist books and zines are a great way to present your artwork, short stories, photography, or anything else you can think of. In this class, I'll take you step by step through the process of designing a book with content, reproducing the pages, and binding them together using Pamphlet Stitch, a basic binding method that's easy to learn and really fun to use. At the end of the class, you'll have created multiples of your very own artist book or zine that'll be perfect to bring to your next craft fair, zine fest, or comic con. No prior bookbinding experience is required. All you need are your own two hands, some basic tools and materials, and your great ideas. See you in class! Before getting started, it will be helpful to gather the tools and materials you will need to make your book. If you have some basic art materials, you will probably be able to do this project with things you already have. Things you will need are a few sheets of plain letter-sized printer paper, a pencil and eraser, a bone folder or other folding tool, even a dull butter knife will work, a heavy duty needle, an awl for punching holes, this is optional because you can just use your needle, but the awl will be useful if you're making many books, strong thread like linen binding thread or a heavy duty sewing thread, beeswax will come in handy because it helps the thread glide but this is optional. Some thread comes pre-waxed, a pair of scissors, some binder clips or paper clips, an X-Acto blade and cutting mat, a ruler, and some different types of papers to use for the covers if you'd like, plus any materials you will need to make your artwork or content for your book. That part's up to you. You should be able to find these items at any art supply store, but two great resources for these things are Talis, a store that specializes in binding materials, and the French Paper Company, which sells interesting text and cover weight papers that you can use in a printer or copier. You can find a list of these materials in the project section of this class. The structure we are working with in this class is called pamphlet binding. Pamphlet books are books that use one section of folded pages called a signature with a cover that are sewn together through the spine. Pamphlet binding is a fairly simple structure that is easy to master but can have a big impact. It's perfect for small books, zines, or giveaways such as event programs. Let's look at some examples of pamphlet bound books and zines. Here's a great shot of a selection of zines made by the Small Science Collective, a collaboration between scientists and artists. When you're thinking about creating your artwork, something that you might want to consider is if you will be reproducing your artwork in color or black and white. And I think this is a really great example of how you can jazz up black and white prints since most of them are printed on different colored papers. So you can reproduce your artwork relatively inexpensively by sticking with black and white, but you can still get a little color with the different colored papers. This book called The Real and the Unreal People by Justo Cascante III is just a really great example of how putting your illustrations into a book can show off things that you might think of as just like a one-off sketch or drawing. It really becomes a strong piece as a book. Plus, the black and white ink drawings reproduce great as photocopies. This is a piece by Susan Happersett, who's a book artist, called Fibonacci Flower. It was published and printed by Purgatory Pie Press, which is a printmaking and bookmaking team from New York City, and they make really great books, and they're all letterpress printed, and this book is really interesting because it uses the pamphlet sewn binding, but I like how she's incorporated these little fold-outs into the pages. 
And that can be easily done just by making one of the sheets of folded paper a little bit longer than the others. So it makes an extra page that folds out from two of the individual pages. And here's another Purgatory Pie press book by Georgia Luna called Everything Falls Into Place. This is called a Dosi Do book, but it's basically two pamphlet bindings where the cover is folded into sort of a zigzag and then one pamphlet book is sewn into each of the two spines that are created by folding the cover that way. So it's just a really cool take on a typical pamphlet binding. This book, Cell Memory by Macy Chadwick, is another pamphlet bound book, but she's cut the pages into a different shape. And it looks like each of the pages in the book is a slightly different shape, so it creates this nice layering or like peekaboo effect where you can kind of see the upcoming pages just by their edges showing. And here's another book with shaped pages by Katherine Petke, which also uses the pamphlet binding. As you can see, she's also incorporated fold outs and cut paper into her design. So these last two examples are kind of really taking the pamphlet binding to the next level and you can really see a range of possibilities with all of these books, from the very simple to the very complex, and they all use the same type of binding. Another great resource to look at is the website for Printed Matter. Printed Matter is actually a physical store located in New York City that specializes in small press artist books and zines. So if you can, you should go check them out in person. But if you can't, they have a great website. Another great website to look at is the website for Vamp and Tramp booksellers. Vamp and Tramp is based in Birmingham, Alabama, but they spend most of the year traveling around to different book-related and printmaking-related exhibitions and conferences, and they also have a very extensive website, and you can go and look here at the Fine Press and Artist books and scroll through and see every artist that they have in their catalog. And on here you'll see a really large array of different binding techniques. Here's more work from Susan Happerset. This is a really great pamphlet book. This is um, collaged and photocopied magazine cutouts. Whether your book will hold writing, artwork, photos, or something entirely different, the best ideas will probably come from something you're already familiar with. If you're a writer, maybe you would like to make a book of your poetry or short story. If you're an artist, you could make an artist book, an artwork in book form, like many of the books we've been looking at. Or if you're a cartoonist or illustrator, perhaps a, a mini comic is in your future. The possibilities are endless. Whatever you're working on, it will be important to consider the sequence your art will take in its final book form. So think about the way your images and writing interact with one another, especially if they'll be on facing pages. Once you've created the content for your book, it'll be time to make multiples of it. We sometimes refer to this as an edition, which is usually a limited printing of a book or fine art print. Limited editions are usually signed and numbered by the artist and are not reprinted after the original quantity is made. Other methods you could consider for future projects could be silkscreen, letterpress, relief printing, or any other method of creating multiples that you can think of. Think about the number of copies you will want to have of your book. If you will be selling your zine at an event like a craft fair, comic con, or zine fest, you may want to make a large quantity like 50 to 100, especially if you do many of these events. If you're using your zine as an event program or giving it as a gift, the quantity will probably be tied to the number of people you're expecting. So hopefully this all has helped you get some good ideas for your book and gives you some good inspiration. So take some time, explore those websites, look around at books, and gather your materials. And I'll see you in the next section, getting started. So hopefully you have a great idea for your book now. The first step in making your book, even before creating the art or laying out your text, is to make a mock-up of it. It may help 
to make a list or consider the number of images, poems, or pages you will want to have. A pamphlet bound book can be very thin to fairly thick. I would recommend using something like three to eight sheets of your standard weight typing paper, which we will fold in half. So a book starting with five flat sheets, once folded, would give you 20 pages if you use both sides of every page. So let's get started with the mock-up. For the purposes of this class, we're going to be using your standard letter size or 8.5 by 11 inch paper, um, but you could really use any size paper you want to. But I would suggest using letter size paper and then deciding if you want to do a half size book, so each page or your closed book would measure half the size of a sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper, or a quarter size where each page or your closed book would measure a quarter the size of an eight and a half by 11 inch paper. So I think I'm gonna do this quarter size, the smaller size. So, I would start by taking a few sheets of paper and cutting them in half. Next, fold each sheet in half. And this is what your folding tool is for, so you can get that out. And the way you use this is you can fold over your piece of paper, making sure that the corners match, and then just crease the spine with the folder. And for my book, I have eight images. So I'm going to start with four pieces of this. And when you have a folded sheet, it's called a folio. So I'm going to take four folios and I'm going to nest them together. I'm going to take a fifth one to use as my cover. And when you have nested together folios, it's called a signature. And a pamphlet bound book is just made with one signature. And later on we're going to learn how to sew our book together with thread. But for now, since this is just a mock-up, I'm just going to leave it as is. Now we can go through the book and label each page with what will be on it. You can make a descriptive label or make a sketch or use a printout and stick them on with tape. Or you can do something as simple as assign letters and numbers to each page that correspond with the list of images or text that you're going to put in your book. Now that I've labeled my pages, I can use this mock-up as a guide for laying out my images or text, whether that be physically or even on the computer using a program like InDesign. So when I take the pages apart, I can see that my first sheet, which starts with page one, when I open it up, I see that page 14 and page 1 should be opposite each other. And on the back should be page 2 and page 13. And so I can go through all of the pages and see which ones should be facing one another. This will ensure that once the folios are nested together, all the pages will be in order. Since I'm doing the half sheet, I could even 
stick these together so that I know that when I'm laying them out to print on a full sheet that I want pages 12, 3, 2, and 13 to be on one side of the page and page 4, 11, 14, and 1 to be on the other side of the page. So then when I print them out, I'll have a page like this that I cut in half to make the pages that I nest together into my pamphlet book. So take some time to make your own mock-up and then begin creating or laying out your content using the mock-up as a guide. When you are ready, you can make copies of your pages. I'll be off to my local copy shop, but you can also use your home printer if you'd prefer. So now we have a stack of copied prints to assemble into finished books. Take one sheet each of your book and a cover. I've made my pages four to a sheet, so I'll begin by cutting my full sheets in half. Most copy machines give you this white border, and if that bothers you, you can trim it away. my book I've made using a piece of this kind of textured off-white paper and I made these elements that I cut out and then I'm gluing them onto each cover. You could do this at this point or you could do it after you assemble the book. The first step, just like when we did the mock-up, is to fold our pieces of paper in half to make folios. So next, we're going to nest the sheets together. And last, you'll put the cover on. Now, we have to punch holes through the spine for sewing, so we'll have to make a sewing guide. This is kind of an optional step because if you're just making one book, you can really just measure and punch right on the inside of the book. But if you're making a lot of books, like in our case, you probably want to make a sewing guide, which will make it a little bit easier. So I'm using a scrap of cardstock you can even just use a piece of computer paper, but the height of it is the same height as my book. So when it comes time to punch the holes, it'll fit right in the spine of the book. So first fold your scrap paper in half, and then you can measure measure where the center is. So in my case, my book is five and a half. So the center is going to be two and three quarters. And you can mark it first. And then I would make the other two sewing stations maybe about a quarter inch from the edge. And if you'd like, you can also just eye it. You don't always have to measure so precisely. If you're happy with the position of your three holes or sewing stations as they're called, you can use your awl to punch the hole. So just gently punch a hole through each dot that you've made in the crease of your piece of paper. So now this has become your sewing guide. And just in case something is a little off, you might want to mark which side is facing up. So now, 
Open your book to the center and place your sewing guide inside. And so since I trimmed down the little white edge of my printer copy paper, my cover is a little bit bigger than my pages. This is just another thing to look out for because you want to make sure that your pages are centered on the top and bottom. And this is where those paper clips might come in handy. If you have trouble juggling all of these pieces, you can paper clip your pages together so that everything stays in one place and doesn't jiggle around while you're trying to punch your holes. So I placed the sewing guide and I let the book keep a slight angle to it and then I just punch a hole through all the pages using the guide to show me where to punch. Make sure it goes through. And you don't need really big holes, so yeah, so that should do it. And if you turn your book over, you'll see the holes punched through the other side. So once you have your holes punched, we need to get the thread ready. So for thread, we don't need that much. You just need to measure about maybe a little more than two lengths of your book. I'm going to use this great red thread because you'll be able to really see it. You can see what I'm doing, but I think it's also going to look great with my book. So I've measured about two book lengths, but you need a little extra. Make sure you leave a little extra for tying. And now with your beeswax, if your thread isn't pre-waxed, if you're just using heavy duty sewing thread or regular linen book binding thread, you can take your piece of beeswax and just start running your thread through. This is kind of an optional step because especially for the pamphlet book, which is a very thin, it's only one signature, the roughness of the thread isn't really going to be much of an issue, but it does help the thread glide through the pages much more easily. So you can thread your needle. Now, starting from the outside of the book, you're going to put your needle through the the center sewing station. And just be careful that it's definitely all of your punch holes should still be lined up if you've used the paper clip method. So, but otherwise just be careful that it's definitely going through the hole that you punch and you're not going to make a new hole someplace else. So pull that through, but leave a tail on the outside. Just enough to tie, so like a couple inches. And next, you want to go through the bottom sewing station and again make sure that your needles coming out where you want it to and once you pull the thread through to the outside you're going to skip over the center and go right through the top station. Make sure 
sure you're keeping your thread pretty taut, but don't pull too hard because you could tear through all of your pages. So last, we're going to put the needle back through the center station and be careful not to split the thread that's already going through. So once you pull your thread out to the outside of the book, you want to make sure that both ends of your thread are on either side of the long piece that goes straight across. And give it another gentle tug to make sure everything is tight. And then you can tie a square knot around that center piece. And Trim off the excess. If you want to leave it longer, you can, or you can cut it short. And alternatively, if you, I tend to like this little, not on the outside, but if you want a neater look, you can start from the inside, and then your threads will end up on the inside of the book. So it makes the outside look a little bit neater. And there you have it. You've made your very first pamphlet book. Now, since we are making an edition, you have plenty of other copies to practice on. You can continue with this method until you've found all of your books. have lots of other ideas. Another great use for this type of book is for making blank sketchbooks and journals with your favorite papers in them, or even for using the pamphlet binding to bind existing art or writing. Don't forget to check my sample project for additional resources and tips. I hope you enjoyed the class. Thanks for taking Bookbinding 101.